Republican man of the hour and a smiling Mrs. Barry Goldwater meet the people and the press as they walk the streets of San Francisco in the opening days of the Republican National Convention. At the hotel where much of the preliminary activity had centered, the platform committee gave the conservative senator a victory in writing a generally mild civil rights plank and in refusing to include a plank disapproving Mr. Goldwater's wish to entrust control of atomic weapons to the Pentagon. Challenger William Scranton is not a man to be deterred by such setbacks or by the overwhelming numbers of votes early reported pledged to Mr. Goldwater. Right to the last moment, the Pennsylvania governor keeps up his plucky fight. An enigmatic figure in San Francisco is former President Eisenhower, who arrives with Mrs. Eisenhower. He attends the convention as a commentator, not a participant, and he consistently adhered to his avowed policy of non-commitment to any man. Reminiscent in scope and orderliness of last year's peace march on Washington is the demonstration for civil rights. 50,000 people converge on the Civic Center to protest a Goldwater nomination and the civil rights play. Former Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge is one of the active Scranton backers to be on the dais during the rally. Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who turned his campaign organization over to Governor Scranton, also attends. Important to any convention is the keynote speaker, who this year is Oregon Governor Mark O. Hatfield. His duty is to throw down the gauntlet to the Democrats rather than engage in party disputes. Governor Hatfield gives the News of the Day cameraman some highlights of the message he delivers to the delegates assembled in the Cow Palace. The Republican Party offers to the voters of this country, to Republicans, to Democrats, and to independents alike, a faith a faith in believing in the American people and their capacity to govern themselves, a faith in American labor, its right to organize, and its expectation that there will not be penalizing kind of legislation to thwart their cause, a faith in the federal system of our government, that the states and the local governments do have a place and a role to play in our great scheme of government, a faith in the American farmer, a faith in minorities to make and to continue to make contributions, a faith in our ability to eliminate bigotry from this nation, whether it is in the Communist Party or the Ku Klux Klan or the John Birch Society. This is the party of faith, a faith that believes in the basic eternal moral values of the Judeo-Christian faith. All of this means that America does have a choice. It has a choice of continuing with a party of fear or turning to a party of faith and progressive spirit.